Hi there and welcome back to Torment, Tides of Numenera. We're talking to these strange figures huddled around a crazy campfire in the Valley of Dead Heroes. Donovan Russ, he looks like Elvis from the clothing. His eyes flicker over you briefly and then he's back to staring at the distance. Thalana said you're deserters from the endless battle. Donovan stops breathing, the smoke falls from his nerveless fingers, and his face goes slack with terror. He starts shaking, and a single sob breaks from his throat before he snaps back to reality. The flat expression settles back onto his face, and he picks up his dropped smoke, he takes a deliberate drag, and only then does his tension ease. No. Scantholds. Timpo, Zed, oh gods. Brasketh, why, 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 why? God, he's, a tr he's traumatic. <laughs> oh my God. Can you tell me anything about the endless battle? His breath hitches, but he controls his reactions this time. No, see it yourself. All right. Uh, can I ask you other guys now about the endless battle at this time? So... Thalana says you're deserters. The Commander Galei frowns. Yes, we have left our posts. But I do not believe we have deserted. I believe we have become aware. If the battle is endless, then our struggle means nothing. If our struggle means nothing, why should we continue to struggle? Scanthold's money and glory were our reasons. Were. I don't remember being so foolish. Will we go philosophic or will we go nano? Hmm. An ideal? No, that's not what we would ask for. Power, for glory? Not really. The struggle reveals who you really are. That is interesting. That's something a nano could say. Or we could be logical. You could just as well be talking about life. If life has no meaning, why continue to struggle? I like that. Perhaps the struggle is not for life itself, but to find life's meaning, or perhaps it is a biological imperative. Chemistry and instinct are powerful motivation. His metal shoulder shrugs. It doesn't matter, though. We will not be going back. All right, farewell. So, I've talked to Luca, and I tried to talk to Denovan about the endless battle. Good enough. They were normal people once. Ordinary, thrill-seeking kids. Look at them now. Most wars, she starts, a group of people march in with their artifacts. Gravity, light, pulse, time benders, and march back out. Endless battle is like that, but going on for centuries. Think of what it does to the landscape. Think of what it does to the psychic terrain. Think of what it does to your friends. She waves at her nearby companions, her gesture continuing to colleagues unseen. And when you're vermin to the people who run the war, when you've got no hope to survive and you can feel reality is collapsing around you, when you see wormholes open up and monsters walk through, when the air is toxic and the ground melts and you feel your mind assaulted, but it's not personal, it's not someone who wants your destruction in particular, you're just inconvenient to them. Your death is another number, a way to measure their success. It's hell. A business like hell. And you did it. Castoffs. You could stop if you wanted, but you don't. Or maybe you don't care. I mean, when you've met statistics of your enemies, faceless foes whose existence you can erase without qualm, you're not just hurting them, you're hurting yourself. The way you see the world, soon everything is conflict and pain. All that matters is your success, and you've killed yourself, and you don't even know it. She wipes a tear away. It ruins everything, everyone it touches. Ah. Uh, um, I'd like to rest here safely, but not now. Okay, she has a point. She has a point. That could be understood as a critique of today's world, right? Absolutely. And what's in here? These packs are lived out, but appear ready to leave at a moment's notice. 
They smell faintly of herbs and ozone. What's over here? Ready. Can we go up there and interact? No. With alacrity. We have to go back through this uh, magma. Yes, now. Lava, flowing lava it is the correct term, I think. Please correct me. Looks like somebody meant to add this platform once. That project since has been abandoned. All right. Can we talk to Perseya again now? We'll see. Armadon? No. Of okay, course. let's go back through that tiny rift. And walk through the darkness. Yes. This is also very interesting. Can we pick something again? No. Probably yes. not. Let's continue further. These strange statues. And uh, that looks like a six eyed cat. What is this? The symbol is painted everywhere, much so that the air is thick with a coppery scent of blood, both dry and fresh. And this thing? Ready. Fourth. What? Rising before you is a tall and tapering obelisk crowned with a carved stone head, some elegant, sharp eared animal with six eyes. Wrapping around the obelisk are bands of engraved hieroglyphs. Examine the head. The carved head mounted on top of the obelisk stares out into the distance, its eyes empty and mournful. And the hieroglyphs? Except for four stylized depictions of the same sharp-eared animal that tops the obelisk, the pictographs make no sense to you. And the base? The base of the obelisk is smooth, untouched by any weathering or other troubles that seem to have eroded much of the other ruins in this place. It sits in a pool of acrid liquid. The liquid smells foul and caustic. But the obelisk appears undamaged. It's unclear how much more of the obelisk lies beneath the pool. The statue's head seems to move until its eyes stare directly into yours. It's still mournful, but no longer empty. A faint, beckoning glimmer shines within. You turn to your companions, but they don't seem to notice that anything strange has happened. Oh, we'll look back. We want to know everything. It could be dangerous, but that's who we are. A wave of dizziness overcomes you as you gaze into the statue's eyes. You are no longer facing the obelisk. Instead, you are no longer human. Are we the, the, the six-eyed cat now? The tail of the dead lark in your mouth drags along the ground as you creep through the dense foliage of the temple. You peek out through the Gandu fronds and see the old monk Nimu Shucking how pods on the weathered steps you pad out to greet him, and he grins toothlessly at the sight of you. There she is, she says, chuckling. There's my brave hunter, and with a gift. How thoughtful. Oh, yeah, how thoughtful. You drop the lark at his feet and arc your back as he strokes your fur and adjusts your color. Oh, we're that cat, indeed. But your work isn't done, sweet girl. There's larks aplenty in the grain room. Bring me a dozen more before I finish these house, and I'll give you your favorite nibble. So larks are some kind of mice, I guess? A dozen larks is nothing to a hunter of your skill. You pad off to the granary, ready for battle. The obelisk reappears, and you realize your joy was remembered only. Let's do that again, that was exciting. Another wave of dizziness overcomes you as you succumb to the statue's memories. You watch from the undergrowth, terrified as the followers of the bird god pull down the stone statues of the great ones and chase the monks from the burning temple. Oh, it was a cat temple and now the bird people come. Heathen, cries their leader, worshippers of false gods, kill them all. A birdman sees you. He shrieks, A settle! We must kill it! The monks hide their souls in their little beasts. If we don't wipe them all out, the monks will return as strong as ever. Oh, so is that the, the soul of the monk, too? 
You turn and bound into the jungle as a mob of angry men crash in after you, and the obelisk fills your vision again. A setul, so that's what this creature is called. A catul, I called it. Let's see if there's anything else hidden there. You watch from a low branch as grave robbers tear up the stones of the ruined temple's nave, looking for the old catacombs. Their leader sits on the stone head of a fallen statue, patting it and stroking its pointed ears. He loves. This is what the old monks worshipped before the Gerudi wiped them out. The prince of the Chetul, they say in his big ears, hear all the secrets ever whispered within earshot of any of those six-eyed pests. That's, that would be the cat, right? The Catul, you hiss at the insult. He looks up. Oi, there's one now. Has been a monk alive round here to tame a Cetul in a hundred years. He chirps at you. Come here, little one. Let me see that jeweled colour of yours, won't you? Looks like lovely worksmanship. You give him a disdainful look and climb further up the tree as the obelisk returns. Memory fades and the obelisk returns. We want to we want to know what comes after that, right? You watch from under a gandu bush as a father and mother drop double arm loads of spring wood in the middle of the temple ruins, then sit and mop their brows. Their three children begin stripping the stalks of their bark. Plenty to build without here, at least, says the father. And we'll need all we can get, says the mother, without a pyramid of fence to keep out the balls and the skull hounds. We'd be dead in a week. What about the larks? One of the children cries. Father laughs. Pray to Goonie, daughter. Maybe he'll send one of his servants for us. He's the prince of all Katurl, you know? Your ears prick up. At last you are wanted. It is time to hunt. The eyes of the statue fade, though they do not go out entirely, as though it has divested itself of a responsibility. Why it did so? Remains a mystery. Oh, is there anything else? I have a feeling it's over, but... No. The tail, the dead lark in your mouth, drags along the ground as you creep through the dense foliage to the temple. You peek out through the Gandu fronds and see the old monk, Nimu. Aha, yeah, here's my brave hunter. No, it's, it, starts, it starts again. Okay. Let's leave the vision and continue. What is that blob of three? He has... He's got a belly. This corpulent mass is almost too large, but slowly you realize it is three beings. Somehow melded together into one, a fleshy jumble of three faces on a single head protruding from a shapeless mass of a torso. Two of the faces track your approach, while the third mutters under its breath. When it speaks, the three voices blend into one buzzing, angry harmony. Tell us who you are. Tell us what you want. Do you also seek the mask? Did you climb the leaning obelisk here in the valley, held aloft by Saint Proverbius? The third face begins cursing and drooling. Slimy, jolly and wise and hate them. C -c Cold and red. P -p -p it tails off as if dazed. It resumes its looking in another direction entirely. Ill, so ill. All three of their thoughts assault you at once, impossible to distinguish from one another. If there's any useful information coming from their minds, it is lost in the cacophony. Uh, first, uh, um, uh, yeah, we are a cast of. What are you? And as 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 to shoot question, we are three: a glaive, a jack, and a no missing, but one we require a fourth. We seek knowledge here in the valley. We pursue the wisdom of the ancients in this f fallen age. We assess, we judge, but humanity is on the decline. It is only through purity and adherence to the old ways that we achieve enlightenment. And when you say you need a fourth, what do you mean? 
a force to join us, to complete us, to square our circle. Someone to sing to us, to unite us, to suggest someone. I've squared some circles in my time, but I'd rather stay out of this one, if you don't mind. Faces pull away from each other, trying to ogle him from every angle. Experienced, charming, like us, but unwilling, the first face says. Name another, snaps the second face. The third one giggles. Ah. Uh, what if I sought a minstrel, a bard? Would that help you? Yes, his voice would soothe. His words, his leadership, history, could understand law markings in valley. Second face says, need one who is similar to us, no songs of power. The first face replies, there are none like us, none, we are pure, pure. The third face gibbers profanity, you don't understand its words, but its meaning is clear, it hates everyone and everything but itself. Uh, how did you come to be this way? We climb the leaning obelisk to seek the mask of Prosper. Everyone should climb the obelisk. We enter the portal. We emerged on the other side, as you see us. A maze surrounded us over which the painful shadow of a deity was cast. It was a labyrinth of straight corridors and right angles, full of traps, puzzles, puzzles and monsters. At last we emerged, and now dream of the way to return, to optimize our experience. Mad. Uh, do you want me to undo what has happened to you, or put you out of your misery? Strange creature reacts savagely, thrashing and flailing. No, no, we are happy this way. Happy. Conjoined faces look anything but happy, and its straining limbs are practically tearing it apart, but the blob's tone suggests that you're an idiot for wanting to help. His form is perfect, like the forms of the ancients. Need only a fourth to complete us, but where? The third face sprays a fine mist of saliva and fling across the other two. You fools, you have lost the way. The three faces begin to bicker and squabble in an incomprehensible tongue, and one of them bites into the blob's exposed flesh. The other two howl in rage and begin gnashing and howling, occasionally snapping body chunks out of their own flesh, creating wounds that heal as soon as they appear. Powerful and mad. Tell me about this mask you seek. The mask of Prosper, the true sight. A treasure for the knowledgeable. A useless scrap for those who will not see. We know its truth and its secrets are ours, not for the weak, not for the stupid. And uh, the area. Place of ancient knowledge, a place to rest, recover. Think, did it discuss the memorialists? have helped to locate and understand, but they are being supplanted by the new. The third face mutters, hate new. The head nods vigorously and proudly. The second face says, the new leave us alone. They fear Blob of Three. The third face adds, as should all, we are prestigious. That was Blob of Three. You will be back, yes. That's, of course, very true. There's now a lot to explore. Like climb that, interact with things, speak to that guy over there. Hmm. There's a lot of strange things we'll know in the next episode and we'll be back. <laughs> Have a good time. Until next time and happy gaming.